Hey guys, welcome back. This is Professor Rank. In this video, I wanted to highlight the differences between, or the difference between pass by value and pass by reference. All right, so many times I have students who get confused on the differences between the two, right? And terminology is always tough, and I just wanted to give an additional example, um, as concise as I can make it, of the differences. Okay, so. Um, <clears throat> The, when you're doing pass by reference, okay, whatever you do to the parameter, you do to the argument, okay? So that's pass by reference in a nutshell. Now with pass by value, all you're doing is copying the value of the argument into the parameter. It's kind of like a, an assignment statement, you know, in disguise, right? So I'm gonna show you what I mean in a sample program here. So we'll switch over to the um, <clears throat> Visual Studio and I'll write a couple of functions and just show you, you know, what I mean. You know, it's big thing to remember, pass by reference, anything you do to the parameter, you do to the argument, okay? And pass by value, it's an implicit assignment statement or it's a disguised assignment statement. Okay, so let me, let me switch, let me switch over here. And I'll show you what I mean. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is we'll do pass by reference. Okay. So anything you do to the parameter, you do to the argument. Okay. So this is going to be easy to demonstrate. All right. So I'll write a, um, a, a quick little function, okay, a void function that doesn't return anything, we'll call it foo, okay? And first thing, to make something pass by reference, this is going to require, requires this little guy right here, okay, in the parameter list. That is um, gonna mark a parameter as a reference parameter, okay? A reference parameter. Okay, so <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll just put that ampersand right there. Okay, now if I had two different parameters and I wanted them both to be passed by reference, then I would need an ampersand along each parameter's data type. Okay, uh, all right, so, but I'll just keep this simple. I'll just use one. Okay, and you can put that ampersand right next to the data type or you can put spaces, you know, as long as it's, as long as it's uh, marking the integer parameter, you, you've got some options, right? Or the, the, the parameter that, you're, that you want to use as a parameter reference or a reference parameter, okay? So we're gonna say uh, int x, okay? So int x and anything you do to the parameter, you do to the argument, okay? So let me give you an example. I'll just say, um, you know, see out, enter a number, okay? and then we'll read into X, whatever the user types, okay? So what are we doing here? We're reading a value into parameter X, okay? But remember, whatever you do to the parameter, you do to the argument. So what, is, so what does that mean? Okay, in main, I'll make a variable Y, okay? And I'll initialize it to zero, okay? And then <clears throat> I'll display the contents of that variable. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll call foo and we'll pass that variable as an argument. Okay, and then we'll display the contents of y one more time. Okay, so, oops. So, just like that, All right? So, um, at this point on line 18, when this executes, y contains zero. Now on line 20, we're passing y as an argument. So that reference parameter x and y, they become synonymous, they're linked. So anything that you do to the parameter, to a reference parameter from within that function, you do to the argument. So when I say, so when this function executes and says c and x, I'm gonna type something, I'll say I'll type five. Anything you do to the parameter, you do to the argument. So what does that mean? It's like, it's as if, as if 
I had a statement like this, right? So that value that I type, that five, it's gonna be stored inside of Y as a result of that function call. And then on line 22, you'll see Y contains what I typed, okay? So that's passed by reference. Whatever you do to the parameter, you do to the argument automatically, okay? So there's the Y equals zero, okay? Um, as a result of this C out statement on line 18. Okay, so now enter number is executing or is shown on the screen from where? We're inside of the foo function, so we're right there. We displayed that prompt, and now my console is waiting for me to type something. So in the example, I said I was going to type 5. So I'm going to type 5, and I'm going to hit enter. Okay, and it would actually be useful if I kept the, the window open here. So let me put that there, complete my pause. So we'll do it one more time. Okay, so five. Okay, so now you can see y equals five, right? So y was initialized with zero. We saw that it contained zero. A foo function was called. We saw the prompt. I typed five, and whatever you do to the parameter, you do the argument. So that five went into y via x. Okay, they're linked. So anything I did to x, I ended up doing with argument y. So that 5 went into y. Okay, so then on line 22, when it says y equals again, you see there's the 5. Okay, so that is passed by reference. Anything you do to the parameter, you do to the argument. Now, let's look at an example of pass by value, or also known as pass by copy. Pass by value, or pass by copy. You know, what you're doing is you are assigning assigning the argument to the parameter. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, nobody freaks out if you see a statement that looks like this, um, x equals y, right? What, what does that mean? You're copying, copying the contents of y into x, right? So, if later on I said um, x equals 1, okay, what variable changes? x. y reigns unchanged. They're two separate variables, okay? This is not passed by reference. This is passed by value. This is passed by copy. It behaves differently. So let's, um, let's make another function. We'll call this um, bar, okay? And I'll create a parameter named a notice how there's no ampersand there this is passed by value that's the default behavior no extra work uh, needs to be done okay so in this function I'll display the contents of the parameter okay so we'll do something like a equals it will display a and then I'll assign to a some arbitrary value right I could have used a CN statement but instead of doing that I'm just gonna say a equals 99 okay and then I'll see out and I'll show you the contents of A. Okay, one more time before the function leaves. Now, let me get this stuff out of the way. Okay, we'll get this foo call, and I'll replace that foo call with bar. Okay, so I'm going to call bar and pass it y. Okay, now when I do that, this is like this is an implicit, this is a hidden assignment statement. So this is just like having a statement that looks like this, okay, a equals y. So the contents of y are gonna be copied into parameter a. They're not linked. They're two separate variables, okay? So what's gonna happen is, is that on line 29, y is still gonna contain zero, so we're gonna see zero on the screen. Then we're gonna call function bar, pass it y, so then this implicit, this hidden, Assignment statement happens. The contents of Y, which is zero, will be assigned to A. So then A is gonna contain zero. And so then when line 19 executes, you're gonna see A equals zero, okay? And so then we're gonna overwrite that zero with 99 on line 20. And so then you'll see on line 21, A equals 99, okay? Just like assigning a value, we're just assigning values to variables because a parameter is a variable, okay? 
So then when we come back on line 33, we're going to see what? Y equals. We're going to see zero still. Why? Because Y is its own separate variable, right? We copied zero into A. A is what changed, not Y. Okay, this is passed by value, not passed by reference. So let's uh, compile it and run it. This is very confusing. I mean, this, this is something that people really struggle with when they're learning functions, which is why I wanted to do this video. Okay, so you can see there's the Y equals zero, just as I said, okay. Where'd that come from? Right, that right there, that very first Y equals zero, right there, that first line, because we initialized Y equals zero, we print out the contents of it. Then we called the bar function. And then you can see A equals zero, why? Because we're in the bar function and we had that implicit hidden assignment. So the contents of Y, which was zero, were assigned to A. So A now contains zero. They're two separate variables, right? Y and A are two separate variables. So we see A equals zero, because A now has zero in it, copied from Y. And then on line 20, and that's the second line in our output, A equals zero. And so then <clears throat> line 20, I overwrote that zero in A with 99. I overwrote the zero in A with 99, not Y. Those are two separate variables. Okay, this is not passed by reference, this is passed by value. So A now contains 99. So then when line 21 happens, you see A equals 99. So there's the output there. Okay, now we leave function bar and we go back to main. Okay, and then line 33 executes. C out Y equals what? Zero. And that's what you see on the last line, Y. Because nothing ever changed with Y. There was no assignment statement to Y. Not once, okay? The contents of Y were assigned to parameter A but nothing overwrote what was in Y. There was no assignment to Y. A and Y, parameter A and argument Y, are separate variables, okay? It was like a hidden assignment statement. This is different than passed by reference. Okay, so <clears throat> that is everything that I wanted to show you in this video. Again, it can be really confusing when you're learning functions for the first time. And the best way to really learn that and to get it in your head is to write sample, throw away silly programs just like I did right there. Okay, so if you thought the video was useful, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, you got the thumbs down as well. Appreciate your support of the channel in various ways. We've got memberships, we've got super thanks. Hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, hit the bell so you know when there's new videos that are posted on the channel. If you're a student of mine, please feel free to email me with any questions you might have, stop on my office hours, or hit me up on Zoom. Okay, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.